Well, good evening. So we got, uh, we had a pretty good Sunday here. We got my barley bin full. Uh, I got a Super B loaded this morning. That was my last contracted load. We got this fence put up, this electric fence. We got the two horses and four, yeah, two horses and four cows now in this area. So they're gonna eat all this grass down. That should be the last time we have to put them in here. And it's, it's I mean, different like talking like that. Cause I know there's a lot of people across the province and across the prairies that are struggling to find grass, struggling to find pasture for their animals. Around here, that's not the case. I mean, we've been, I, I just, I just mowed the ditch again. Uh, like there's, there's plentiful grass here. Uh, maybe not for a massive herd, but for my herd of nine steers, two horses, one pony, five pigs and 20 chickens, there's definitely more than enough. We had bought this gate thing earlier. Uh, I don't think it's meant to go on these stupid cheap posts, but uh, it works. So we put this gate here. So the uh, Corey and my daughter can come and get their eggs and they don't have to uh, hop over the fence. So I'm just gonna slip up here. These pigs, as everyone that I asked about it before I did it, everybody told me, no, no, they'll escape with what you're doing with those corral panels, uh, those freestanding panels and the chicken wire, they, uh, they will escape. So people had options or suggestions of what I should be doing, but uh, of course I didn't listen because I want to do my own thing. And yeah, it didn't work, they escaped. So Corey went out the other day and she bought a roll of this, <clears throat> it says chicken page wire on it. So you can hear it snapping away there. This definitely is the way to go. Now, like Corey said, they don't give this stuff away. I think this was 370 bucks for just enough to do. But I mean, it's pretty big and uh, comes with the posts. Everything's all attached to it already. And uh, very easy, you just roll it out, set it up and then uh, get it electrified. But uh, we got these guys moved in here now. And I'm kind of hoping that uh, as they get the odd shock, I mean, they don't they don't touch it anymore. They they yesterday when we first set it up, they couldn't get enough of getting their faces shocked. But now they seem to be sticking away from it, and I'm hoping that uh, once they've been in here for a week or two, that when we put them back in there, they will uh, they will have more respect for the fence. Uh, and if that doesn't work, we did buy some other uh, a smaller animal posts where you can adjust the height of the wire. We just stuck them in there for now. So we can we can go around and uh, <clears throat> electrify that. But while they're out of here, we're supposed to get a good rain tonight and you know maybe even throughout the week. So that should replenish their uh, little bit of grass. And uh, I mean, as you can see up here, we're no shortage of green grass. This uh, This has had the cattle in it all summer and tromping away you know even these guys in here there's plenty for them so this cow is always just watching me just standing and staring rude but while i'm up here i thought i should uh do a quick uh tour of Corey's chicken coop so this was an old granary that we salvaged from one of the quarters of land that we have out west I brought it back. We didn't know what we were going to do with it, but uh, you know, skids and everything were good. And uh, Corey really wanted a chicken coop, so I thought, you know, we should we should turn it into a chicken coop. Now I'm not a patient guy, and uh, I actually didn't want to be involved in it. So her and my dad did it. She was planning on getting it painted, and we got some scaffolding now, so she she might get that done this summer yet. But. Uh, <clears throat> This was actually part of an, it's a panel from an overhead door. So it's, it's insulated and uh, it fit right in that hole actually. So they just cut the bottom out so we can let the chickens out the bottom and leave that closed. Cause if you open that, the cows and everything will go in there. I don't remember where she said she got the windows from, but they were repurposed. This door, I believe come off of my mom and dad's house many moons ago, but it was in a shed. So inside, there's a, there's a little area here 
this fridge was in the trailer that we moved into. It worked, but it would every once in a while defrost and get the floor all wet. So we moved it out and we moved it up here and we thought, well, I mean, why not, right? It still it does keep stuff cool. And it was a good thing we did that because the new fridge we bought failed instantly. And we actually, you know, it was funny. Corey had to come up here every morning to get milk and stuff. So, but she's got this area here. Uh, funny thing too, she got my dad to insulate and put up all the boards, all the plywood and everything. And it was all done. And then she said, uh, I want power in it. So, so everything had to be run outside. She didn't realize that was supposed to be supposed to be done as you were building. So there's lights in here and there's lights in the coop. Also, she didn't want it as tall as because it would be harder to insulate. So she wanted to build a loft. So she put these rail bars up there. My dad built her some stairs to get up there. So now up there, she keeps all the, uh, all the fencing supplies she's got some shavings and stuff like that and uh, we leave that open up there because it lets some of the uh, moisture out in the winter time she puts a piece of plywood over here because this is a screen door I think also out of my parents house so uh, yeah it all got repurposed and then in here she started her uh there's a hammer hanging there. I'm not sure why. Maybe in case the chickens go after them, they can defend themselves. I don't know. But uh, they got their, I guess this is the deep litter method. We were watching uh, Kirkfell Farm. That's where we get pretty much all of our chicken information from. If you don't know much about chickens, definitely check out all his channel because he, uh, he knows quite a bit about them. So we... Uh, that doesn't really look right. I'm not sure what happened here. Crazy. But uh, anyways, yeah, so that's all this, uh, all this wiring had to be run external because she didn't tell my dad she wanted it wired until they were finished. But this is all uh, like really well insulated. The roof is insulated. It's And uh, she's got, uh, she uses these, buckets as nesting boxes these <clears throat> that's just extra roofs i guess and then she went with this she made these this style feeder so they used to be all straight but the pigs and the cows get in here and knock stuff around she puts one grit one oyster shell and the rest she just fills with feed kind of works all right this we use for water. Uh, I know lots of people say the water always gets dirty and gross, and that probably is, but uh, it seems to last quite a while. And the reason this is hanging here is in the wintertime, we just hung a, uh, a floating livestock heating element in here. So uh, she just kept filling this up and uh, it seemed to stay relatively clean. She would clean it out every few, every few days and refill it, but uh, it worked pretty good for that. All right, and I know now what I did here. So this wire isn't hooked up to anything. But uh, <clears throat> for in the winter, we when we were using artificial light to help aid in chicken product or egg production, I put this light in here, so it's just screwed to the wall. There's and then this goes down into this timer, and then timer plugs in here. Then you can set the timer, and we were setting it so the chickens were getting about 16 hours of light a day. Because up here in northern Alberta, in the winter, you get like five hours of light a day. And that wasn't enough. Egg production went way down. There's the whole argument of is it worth paying the power bill to get the eggs? And kind of what we're doing here, it's sort of irrelevant. Like we're doing this just to get the eggs. We, we're, not, we're not selling eggs. We're not doing any of that stuff. We have just kind of enough chickens for ourselves. So, uh, I mean... It might be cheaper to go right to the store and get yourself a dozen eggs. Even maybe it's cheaper at that point to go get yourself the expensive eggs at the store. But that's not what we wanted to do. So we didn't really worry too much about if this was taking away power or not. And it undeniably, the egg production went up as soon as we started using artificial light for the chickens. <clears throat> and then as far as size, this piece in here that they made... Uh, it ended up being 11 by 9, so I guess 99 square feet. I'm not exactly sure 
how many chickens that was supposed to hold or if Corey had done any figurings before she built it this big. Seems to be a pretty good size. She was up to 30 birds, I think, at one point, and then the fox got, <coughs> got quite a few of them, so she's down to whatever it is now. I don't know. So anyways, it's about quarter to eight now. I uh, think we've put in a pretty good day for a Sunday. As I've said before in my videos, the weekends don't really matter in ag. Kind of uh, a friend of mine, we used to joke about it that every day was the weekend. So it didn't matter if your work was done and it was Tuesday afternoon, you could go to the lake. All you got to do in ag is make sure your work is done. So uh, we had things to do today even though it was Sunday. We wanted to get all these critters moved over here, uh, get this fence set back up. I thought Super B was here this morning, I had to load him. And uh, you know, so on and so forth. So anyways, you're, you're around home all day, so you may as well get some yard work done, get some grass mowed, things like that. And that's just the way it is. <clears throat> but anyways, I'm gonna go in and have some supper, as always, thanks to those who watch. And we will see you all on the next one.